We know that Toyota builds great hybrid vehicles, but can they also build great fully electric vehicles? We will find out today with Thomas Naudegefühl with the Toyota BZ4X. They are purpose-built electric vehicle on an EV platform. It shares the technology and also platform with the Subaru Zolterra and the Lexus RZ, so like a you know three-thing uh, brotherhood. And we can see here the front design, streamlined, very sleek, actually quite cool, with very slim integration of the front headlamps. And it's either available as front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Then you have two electric motors, like we have today, one in the front, one in the rear. And the acceleration figure is just differing slightly 0.5 seconds, so either around 7 seconds or 7.5 seconds. Aerodynamics wise, will be interesting here this air breather or this, you know, air curtain here directly channels the wind alongside the wheel arch. The length at 4 meters 69 or 185 inches, so compact to mid size size, depending on the definition. A VW ID4 would be a competitor, for example, or also a Tesla Model Y. Then here in the front, we can see 18 inch wheels with winter tires today. You can also pick 20 inch wheels in for a sportier look and also driving experience. Really looking forward how the drive will be with these ones here today. As for recharging, the flap is here in the front. And it's very interesting, you have either 11 kilowatt AC charging now or 150 kilowatt DC maximum in summertime in good conditions and then you can actually also score some around 150 kilowatt DC charging and it will be somewhat 10 to 80 percent state of charge around 30 minutes 32 minutes that's fine but in winter conditions like we have here today this drops down significantly and you sometimes only score some 45 kilowatt SDC charging and then you have like double triple times of charging so for winter charging it's not really working that well why is that a problem why is Toyota doing that well they want to basically conserve the battery because they give a warranty of 1 million kilometers or 10 years that the battery is still holding a capacity of 70 percent and because they give this extended warranty on the battery capacity they say we rather keep the charging speed in winter time when the battery is cold low. You can also charge quickly in winter times when you speed it up on the motorway, then it's possible the battery has to be around 20 degrees, the battery temperature, then it works. And the battery capacity, by the way, is 71 kilowatt hours net. In summertime, this is giving us theoretical figures of 4 kilometers or 250 miles. But in winter time, we'll test it today what will be the concise range. And styling wise, both the front also and rear, really way accentuated crossover wheel arches, maybe a little bit too much. Tell me in the comments. And then towards the rear, it's a more futuristic design indeed. You could hear how the wind is being channeled right there and then the standing out tail lamps. But I think overall the design is actually quite cool. What do you think? Tell me your opinion in the comments. And there's the BZ4X, like beyond zero, beyond zero emissions. And 4X, more like this, you know, crossover, all-road design. Yeah, um, maybe they could pick like a cooler name, like Corolla or something, but you know, a new one, you know. I think that when cars get real names, it's better when there's some combination like this. And here in the rear design, also one thing in this big crossover cladding. My favorite design detail is here, the light strip that goes all the way across the top speed. Official figure is 160 kilometers an hour or 100 miles an hour. We will test that on the German Autobahn today, if that's true, or if it also goes a little bit faster. Today we have here the standard roof, just a high gloss black, but there's also a solar roof available. But are these really helpful for the range? Not that much, actually, unless you're standing out in the sun in a very sunny state all day, all year or something. And we also have another color to show for you here. This one, the Y combination and these crossover wheel arches are of course even more contrasting when you have a bright vehicle color. And wait a minute, didn't we hear something about the wheels falling off from the vehicle? Well, there is some truth in that because, so before any accident happened or something, Toyota realized that they were using a new technology for the bolts that attach the wheels and they tended to get loose. Well, and then they realized it and stopped everything basically, stopped all deliveries and this one here and also the Salterra 
everything then was fixed. There are new bolts then now. They have a special technology that they don't get loose. Well, they reacted pretty swiftly and also very diligently. That's the good thing about it. So yeah, when you change new things, things like these can happen, but gladly nothing bad, no accident happened with that one. So they say everything is fixed now. Not that excited about the car key and the door closing sound. Not excited either and also not from the build quality, for example, here in the top part. However, this is it's not super soft, but it's not entirely hard and a little bit softer than here. And also here, this high gloss black. Yeah, that's actually not that cool. However, here the entry badge, that looks really premium. And also here the floor mats with the, uh, you know, here with the stamping and then the stitching. That is actually quite cool. And more cool features, look at that fabric covering here. That brings some living room atmosphere inside. And then a very special steering wheel. Although this is the so far standard steering wheel, the real round one with a steering column. At a later stage, there will also be the yoke steering available that will have an open top, basically. You can better take a look at the instruments. And this will be then steering by wire. This here at the moment, the classic setup. Later on, then the steering by wire and we'll keep you updated with that. And here, the seating position, it's really comfortable indeed. So um, very soft seating and with one meters 89 or six foot two, still enough headroom left. Although this one is here, one with the panoramic roof here in the front then, but that's a little bit closer, but overall tall people are totally fine with this one. And the steering wheel here, in and out, up and down, very smooth to control, pretty cool. It looks very futuristic, this whole unit, right? And yeah, the thing is, it was planned already as a yoke that the top part here is open because when I'm sitting here and looking now from here to the front, it is somewhat obstructing the view to the instruments indeed. So um, it works, but the yoke is the one that is planned for this vehicle actually. And seat materials, either fabric or fabric inside, leatherette outside, or this one is the full leatherette or soft tech seat. Very cool, soft material, also with perforation. Even with ventilation, so heating and ventilation, both possible. Great material quality, no animals can use at all. Neither on the seat nor on the steering. Well done. Interior overview. It's very futuristic atmosphere, especially with this whole unit. And of course, the steering, even more futuristic when you have the yoke steering. Seven inch digital instruments, no head adjustment because it's really placed quite high on the right side. You can see, first of all, the fabric covering here, living room atmosphere, but no glove box. And then it would start in lower trim versions with an eight inch screen, but most versions and higher trims here have the 12.3 inch screen, the big one. And let's take a closer look. First of all, here in the lower part, you can still have this temperature unit manual. This is really cool. So you don't have to do it in the screen then. That's easy to do it while driving here also for the vent strength, for example. And also separate buttons here, for example, for the seat cooling. So here leatherette plus seat cooling combination is good. And also for the seat heating. Yeah, the beeping is a little bit annoying though. And then in the infotainment system here, the map is actually usable. You see here, it is actually quite responsive. We have never seen such a responsive map in an internal infotainment system by Toyota. So the best one then there is so far. You either use the car internal GPS or then you'd go directly to the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, wireless or wired, both is possible actually. And the sound in here, you can also plus minus, JBL sound system, yeah, it's actually quite decent. So um, yeah, I like that for my old school trends. <laughs> what would you listen to? tell me in the comments. But overall, I think I'm happy with that. The only thing is that here when we plan a trip, there's nothing available such like a like a uh, route planning, which includes then the charging stops that is still missing, but supposed to arrive later than with an update. And the digital instruments, they're placed very high, so it replaces then also a head-up display and you cannot do too much with it, but they are very well visible. At least when you have the yoke steering, with the normal steering, it's a little bit like this, I would say. So not entirely blocked, but yeah, I view it like this approximately. But it's somewhat okay. For shifting here, you press down, and then this is the drive mode, down, reverse, uh, and then P. Yeah, it's unusual, but it works. 
And then here on the right side, eco mode, that reduces the throttle input a little bit. And this then the X mode for slow speed off-roading. And then here you can actually set the speed of the hill descent control. And on the left side, this is then here for higher recuperation. This you know, half flying middle console, you have a lot of space here underneath, like here, also for the smartphone. There's a USB-C charger here, another one on the other side, because there is no glove box here at all. It's a nice fabric cover here, but no glove box actually. So you have then the storage underneath here. And on the top part here, you have the cup holders. They are also adaptive. And then you have here more space underneath. And a nice feature here, see here, <laughs> you can see my cat underneath because, see here, there's the inductive charging pad and also another USB-A charger. And then here you have this, you know, like, these holes, or it, it almost looks like a solar roof, like when there's nothing underneath, like this here. Um, yeah, it's an interesting, nice feature. Why not? By the way, this connector here in the top, this is then for the Apple CarPlay connection if you want to have it wired. That's also possible wireless, that's also possible. And the chargers below here, the USB C chargers, the lower ones are just for charging. And this panoramic roof here, it cannot be open in a way of letting air in, but you can have this slider here to close it off then when it's getting too hot or so. And yeah, the electric motor for that is really loud, isn't it? <laughs> the experience here in the rear, it's actually nice to have this view here, the panoramic roof, although you have this split here, but the cover goes all the way. Then as for the leg room, this works very well. You have a lot of space in your rear, no problem. Headroom wise, it also works with six foot two or one meters 89. Materials here are not entirely hard pack here. So it looks like a good build quality indeed. Seating comfort, however, you sit quite low. You see here this angle of my knees. It's not uncomfortable, but I would say like the bench itself, not the most ideal for tall people, but overall I'm happy and yeah, it's really spacious using the EV platform. Therefore, it's all the way even here in the low area as well. Then you have two USB-C chargers and also seat heating for both sides. Then at least when you go for the most extensive pack, you can also vary the, um, the rear here a little bit. You can put it like one step up, then it's folding here like this or all the way back so you can sit more upright if you like actually and once again the soft touch or soft text this soft leatherette high build quality really happy with that isofix at the outside parts each and then there's also a third seat belt of course and then you have here some cup holders they are not adaptive though to some it is very important that you have a rear wiper or annoying when there's none well here there is none so if that's important to you you have the information now. <laughs> well, about towing, by the way, 750 kilograms, a small trailer works then. And let's take a look at the trunk. Here we have 450 liters or 28 cubic feet. This cover here, yeah, a little bit wobbly. There's no rail left or right. And then here, quite okay for the trunk, actually. The length here, a little bit less than a meter of 40 inches. And the width, is here also a meter of 40 inches but wider than inside the wheel arches but i'm more always measuring here that you also have the width right there and when you want to fold the seats you have to grab over right here that's actually possible here we go and then to the seats as we would be driving here as tall drivers that's actually pretty decent so here wow i mean just like 190 in meters or 75 inches, more than expected indeed. And see here, this opening is really wide. I can even stand underneath it here with 189 or six for two. And for your charging cable, look at that. You also have some space underneath here. And is there a frunk? Da, 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 da. No, there is not. Welcome to Thomas's driving lounge, Toyota BZ4X. And it begins on the German Autobahn. Most of the time we do that when we have the chance to hear when we film in Germany. And we have deactivated the eco mode and we'll start at the rolling start at 50 kilometers an hour and there's unlimited speed. Let's see how quick this one goes with the overdrive version. Let's go. It's 130. 150. Now wind noise are picking up, 
getting quite loud in here. 170 kilometers an hour and here we have stopped. So this is the maximum speed here, 170 kilometers an hour. It was not super quick. We have a lot of quick EVs out there nowadays and here at high speeds, yeah, wind noise are very, very notable indeed. Suspension wise, it's very stable here also at higher speeds. Let's do a lane change here. Yeah, it's also reasonably quick indeed. Actually very nice. Now using the brakes, is there a good brake blending? Actually quite good feeling in the brakes, no problem. Here at a reasonable motorway speed, like 120 kilometers an hour, 130 kilometers an hour, so yeah, something like 70, 80 miles per hour. It's okay wind noise wise, but definitely not laid out for the highest speeds at wind noise levels. Uh, when you have here the heated windscreen in the front has these small wires inside. Um, I'm not a fan of it. It's of course cool when you need it. You don't have a like, basement garage or single garage or something. But I always see it, and like when there's, especially like a winter, cloudy sky or something, I'm always looking at these wires in the screen. But I think it's like kind of like split, you know, tell me in the comments. Some always say, I don't see them at all, what's the problem? And others say like, I can't look at this, it's driving me nuts, you know. So you really have to be sure when you get a vehicle with that, would you go for this option or not? Or is it standard in your country or not? You So you have to pre-check that before. So at, let's say, slower autobahn speeds it's more comfortable noise insulation wise and the car feels really solid it feels very well settled and very well built actually you feel that while driving it the small steering wheel this one here being not the yoke steering wheel so it will come later when we're filming this review the yoke steering wheel was not yet available for this model but the small size of the vehicle uh, of the of the steering wheel here it feels really cool you know it, it gives you a very sporty approach to the vehicle so we have to straight here yeah no straight yeah straight here right side yeah thank you thomas thomas b is joining us today <laughs> especially when i'm talking he's always like ah, gps was here and there because we always deactivate also the voice uh, guidance on the gps so that you are not always like in 200 meters please turn right and, and then it's of course very annoying and then, yeah, I'm right, right? Yes, you're right. Thank you, thank you. So I really like the steering behavior and we're gonna test it also in the Lexus Brother, in the Lexus RZ, and there we'll have the chance to compare the yoke steering wheel with the, with the standard steering wheel. The difference is that here with the standard steering wheel, you really have a classic steering column and maybe that is more feeling to the steering wheel, we'll have to see. And with the yoke steering wheel, it's steering by wire. That means there's no mechanical connection. It is just by wire. It is completely artificial, basically. And then they also have a fail-safe system with an emergency power support should the main power fail. That's mandatory and that's also needed by regulations. Yeah, um, at the end of the day, this will be the future of steering. Probably every car will probably have that you know, in a couple of years. But so far, besides the very high speed driving, which is too noisy, I think, it feels like a very good motorway vehicle indeed. You know, so, um, you know, like, let's do like a more sudden lane change. Let's see about that. It's about 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. Yeah, it doesn't shake up too much. It stays very calm and settled on the road. We have 18 inch winter tires mounted here. This is the most comfortable setup for this vehicle there is. You cannot switch the suspension or something. So 18 inch and winter tires will be the softer setup, but it's not too soft. The ride will be sportier than with 20 inch and summer tires, definitely. I'm talking about sporty from 100 kilometers now. Let's do another acceleration. 130. 150. So it's definitely not too quick. And the thing is really, with so many Vs out there nowadays that are way quicker, it doesn't give you a real spontaneous, or like, say, it doesn't give you an immediate acceleration. Yeah, thanks for the for the heads up um, recently, because you rather say immediate acceleration than spontaneous acceleration, because spontaneous would be more like unexpected, you know. So, yeah, I think just too noisy at very high speed levels, 
but Toyota probably didn't think about that as a main market, not like Germany, high-speed autobahn, because also the range is not sufficient for that. We'll later talk about the concise range also. We do longer-term testing here today and see about the range, but I can already tell you so far is that there will be a significant cha change or difference between summer and winter range, although this one here standardly has a heat pump. And the funny thing is really, when you turn the heating on or off, it does like a 100 kilometer or 60 miles sudden change, like just on paper. So you can also see that when I turn off the heating, it says here at the moment 320 kilometers left. And when I turn on the heating, 230 kilometers. So like almost 100 kilometers or 60 miles deducted by the range. And it's just um, not that this has you know, like recalculated that in a way. It's just like on paper saying like, oh, so when you turn on the heating, we just put off 100 kilometers or 60 miles. In a way, that's also a service to the customer. So you don't get lost when you're driving in winter time. But I think they could have had more effort to do a real calculation for that, you know, and take vehicle data into account and not just do this, you know, hey, in general, let's put one kilometers or 60 miles off of the chart here or something, yeah. So, indeed, some EV-specific things are missing with this one here. Also, when we have this routing planning here, when we have the GPS guidance, there is no active guidance as for calculating the charging stops and then suggesting, hey, this is your route, and then you need this stop, this stop, and this stop, and this will be the optimum, you know, like travel time plus charging time, like some EVs already offer. But this one does not include it. So, like the specific EV factors, some things are missing indeed, but the general hardware thing, as expected from Toyota, is excellent. It is a excellent drive it feels very well settled here on the on the motorway on the on the german autobahn this is for the vehicles usually the, the best test actually so and already here on the autobahn where i don't have to do too much steering always sells yeah you know it's a lot of fun you know it's really a lot of fun to drive this one low center of gravity you get this crossover kind of feeling so some you know in a way suv like but not too high, but overall very fun driving experience here also on the Automan already. And now we drive a longer way and see about what is the consumption, the electric consumption, when we're driving motorway here at constant speeds all the time. Just some quick notes, how can you influence the consumption in a way? There is the eco mode, so that reduces the throttle input a little bit, but of course it more depends on how you really drive it. And then you also have recuperation-wise, two choices either, as it is here right now, I leave the throttle and then there's slight recuperation actually. And then I can press this button here in the middle console, I feel some changes in the throttle actually, or in the accelerator pedal <laughs> with the EV here. When I lift the throttle then there is a stronger recuperation. So these two modes then are available, so it rather depends on how you drive the vehicle then yourself. As for assistance systems, let's test the lane keeping assist here now off the motorway. So two wide lines left and right, so therefore it's relatively easy for the vehicle. And I've set the cruise control, the adaptive cruise control, distance being kept, and also the active lane keeping assist and see here how the car is being kept in the lane in a rather smooth way. Now it says LDA, soon not available, like the lane keeping assist take off the steering and see yeah there we are that, that touch was actually enough so you're supposed to keep your hands on the steering wheel and so far what experience I have made with these assistance system, assistant systems it was very you know flawless and also smooth and there's also blind spot monitor here built in the side mirror so overall happy with the assistant systems oh, beautiful landscape here and also some more Agile driving, countryside roads, and I have to say that the steering feeling is really good. It's precise, it's progressive enough, and the car gives a very good sporty feeling indeed. The compromise between comfort and sportiness feels also very well mastered when you go some right left here. So it doesn't look the sportiest from the outside, more has this crossover styling, but 
yeah, it's really fun and a very good sporty ride. And suspension, once again, it's very well done. Can just say it here with the 18-inch window tires. I have to maybe test it later on again with 20-inch and also the summer tires. Maybe that might be a little bit stiffer, but it's always the case. If you think about going 18 or 20-inch, with the 18-inch you will always have more comfort. Now it's time to test the all-wheel drive features. As I said, there's a front-wheel drive version available or here the all-wheel drive version we have today, then two electric motors. The basic all-wheel drive setup is, as Toyota says, rather, um, uh, rather even, like 50-50, so there's no front-wheel or rear-wheel bias or so, you know. And what we will also test is the so-called X mode, and we'll tell you more about the differences. So it is being said that in the X mode, at slow speeds, the traction is improved. Every single wheel is, uh, you know, being controlled individually, and we'll just see about the differences. So here so far, I'm in a normal mode. We have good new winter tires. That's, of course, the most important thing, just about the physics. And uh, we have this snow road here. And let's just see when, when I, for example, accelerate a little bit, what are the differences? So for example, for example here, good traction here also in the normal mode. So even here in the normal mode, already feels very good. So the thing is really with the electric all-wheel drives, they are really very good and they can be used for good off-road driving indeed. In front of us, by the way, this is the old world Toyota Land Cruiser there in, in, the, in the red color and here the new world then. And let's see, so in the X mode we have two modes available, snow and dirt and deep snow and mud. For deep snow and mud, that would be, we also see that the EC is roll, ruled back then. In this case then, because for deep snow and mud, we want tires to be a little bit loose. In this case, it would be the normal snow dirt mode. And then in this case, the traction is increased. Let's also see about the throttle input, if that is any different. So let's first of all, in the normal mode, we get a slight push. In the snow dirt mode, yeah, it's being reduced. So there's not this immediate throttle response. So makes everything a little bit smoother that you don't lose traction when accelerating in the snow. So this can be helpful. I mean, when you're used to this vehicle and it can also very gently control the throttle, maybe it will be more or less the same effect, but it is easier then, so to speak, to get the traction here you need. And also when I'm here just rolling, I feel that the systems are changing a little bit. Whereas when you would be in the other X mode, the deep snow mud, here you would need to be a more experienced driver and also say you can get more loose than in, the, in this case. So with these, for example here now, when I'm accelerating, everything is turning, you know, because that's the way, you know, when you're really about to get stuck, it doesn't help when the traction is reducing everything and so on. So when you experience off-road already you know that at some point you sometimes need some spin. So this would be the fun mode for snow driving, so to speak, when you also have, for example, like an open area or something, you can spin it around a little bit. Um, so if we then compare the modes, normal driving mode, already good in controlled driving. The first, yeah, but it's only working when you're really you learning slow. Here then snow dirt mode, this would be then maximum traction more electronic helpers and then when you cycle through deep snow and mud then it would be in a way less helpers the only thing that is additional in here is also that you can set the hill descent control for example um, you can also set it in here but yeah for this these cases here we actually don't need it and you can also just normally use the brakes for that but yeah definitely interesting to have these little helpers here so all drive performance is really decent here. And now what is the final result, the concise, the real world range here in freezing temperatures? Well, we had some consumption figures with predominantly cruise control, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour, some urban, but mainly countryside and motorway, but rather steady. And there were some consumption figures about 25, 26 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers. That is some two and a half miles per kilowatt hour. 
and that is of course not efficient at all and it would mean a real world range of around 270 kilometers or 170 miles here in winter temperatures. And to double check we did a second test run with some higher temperatures so you know, around 10 degrees Celsius and sunny outside that went a little bit better we also drove even calmer and that then was a result of around 22 kilowatt hours on 100 kilometers that means some 2.8 miles per kilowatt hours that would mean a winter range of 320 kilometers or around 200 miles so a little bit better in summertime it will be better yes we can expect that however we have to say driving wise hardware wise from the chassis suspension steering and so on excellent vehicle a lot of fun good driving it feels great also off-road driving here or like all-wheel drive snow driving drives like being on rails and all you also have these off-road mode um, possibilities yeah but as for the ev things in winter as for efficiency and also recharging when it's cold no separate preconditioning available that's some hit and miss so for winter times it's not the ideal ev but for summertime it might be a very fun one of course you can compare the competitors like the VW ID4 and the Tesla Model Y.